We're looking at the Xfinity Series here at Phoenix for this weekend, and this is where I like the short tracks, the Xfinity Series specifically. Now, I don't remember which race, what, which race it was. Was it the opening Richmond race last year or the opening Richmond race the year before that JGR just had the fastest cars and they kept their guys out and didn't pit them? And Nemechek went a lap down. I believe Sammy Smith stayed on the lead lap or it was like the lucky dog or whatever, and it completely ruined the Richmond race. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's this one because we don't see the Junior Motorsports or the uh, the Joe Gibbs cars up there at all. But when we look at this weekend's race, we have – we have, you know, William Byron in the Hendrick car. We have Junior Motorsports. We have Stuart Haas. And we have the Junior Motorsports cars. Uh, the winner is coming from one of those four teams, okay? There, there's not going to be anybody else competing between them, okay? Everything else is going to be determined on um, where people start, the place differential that they can offer, and where they can end up finishing. And we can usually determine that just in the tiers and we're looking through uh, the teams and all that. I'm not going to mention William Byron past this just because there's no data on here that's going to pop up for Byron. Uh, when we look at where the junior motorsport or the J, the JGR cars are, it's going to be hard to beat them. I just don't find it. I, I find it hard to believe that we have uh, Nemechek as 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 the best guy here. Like, come on, man! Consistently across the the board. Yeah, sure. Uh, all the same caveats that I mentioned in the Cup Series video apply here. But when we're looking here, like Nemechek is just going to absolutely murder the field. It's going to be very hard for them to not do that. When we look at Chandler Smith in a JGR car now, he was not in one last year. He was in the Cully car. Wicked fast, you know, just just absolutely just dominating the field. I'm pretty sure – or not – I hate using that word. That was, like, unironically using the term dominator. But, like, when we're looking at where Chandler Smith was in that, you know, hunk of shit Cully car here, like – why 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 is Chandler Smith and Nemechek not the lead guys here? And this is not anything based off of Vegas. This is based off of what we're looking at or what I'm looking at here. It's going to be – I find it hard to believe that it's not going to be one of those guys, Custer or Allgaier, winning the race. When we look at where Custer was last year, same thing. It's the same same goobers just in in the top uh, in the top four. When we look at where Allgaier is, we need to see more – I want to see more speed out of Allgaier because I think he is certainly being surpassed in other places. Even when you look at when Kyle Busch hopped in this car or hopped in the Junior Motorsports – I don't know why I keep saying Junior Motorsports – and the uh, Joe Gibbs Racing car, like, these are going to be the, the main guys. I just find it hard to believe that the Joe Gibbs cars are not the fastest cars, specifically Chandler Smith, Nemechek, Eric Amarola, we'll see, Sheldon Creed – We'll see. When we look at where Creed was was last year, this should be you know worst case scenario where he is this year. I think this is where um, the RCR gang did struggle the most. When we look at the uh, performances that the RCR gang got last year, you know when you think of like Martinsville too, when like Creed and Hill both got fucked over because Creed is just an idiot. Um, these guys put themselves in position to be up front at the end of Martinsville. That was, like, not truly on speed. I know he's, like, third best on here, but, like, the RCR cars are concerning. So, like, um, Jesse Love, Austin Hill, going to be, you know, lower on, on the priority list for me uh, entering this weekend. Once we start going past, like, all those guys, like, there's no reason to really look at Jones. Like, if he works based on salary, we'll play him. If, if he's not showing a lot of speed in practice, like, there's no reason to play him there. Uh, when we look at... If I can find the rest of the people. We look at Sammy Smith taking a step back, leaving the Joe Gibbs cars to the Junior Motorsports car. I would pin him directly with the um, performances that Allgaier has shown, and so I can expect Sammy Smith to probably run 6th to 7th all day. Um, scraping out fast laps, sure, but is he going to be able to do more than that? I'm not necessarily sure on that. The main thing that we're – that's going to decide the rest of this race is going to be what you do with the rest of the field. So the fact that we have one guy going home is good. You know, uh, William Byron's going to, you know, have, have one of these poor souls uh, miss the race. When we look specifically at, you know, somebody like Riley Herbst and stuff is like another guy here. All over the place, man. Truly, truly all over the place. Let's get rid of Weatherman. My interest level or i mean not even interest level like uh, assuming where everybody like falls in line at the lap leaders that uh, i know i keep repeating it but like that that's really the main thing here as long as you nail who the lap leaders are as long as you can nail who's basically running first second and third all day 
having the potential to trade the lead for laps led, uh, trading the fast laps, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, everything else is just going to literally be determined on the 1v1s and the 2v2s that you have in your lineups. Um, and so it's Nemechek, Chandler Smith. I would actually throw probably Cole Custer and Herbst as the four. Past that, you're going to have probably Sammy Smith, Allgaier, fifth and six. And at that point, you know, I mean, that's my priority list uh, way up top. When we're looking at the back of the field, this is where it gets good and interesting. So let's go ahead and, and go and look at where all these guys kind of fall in line at. Let's first off, let's go ahead and look at the JD Moore sports cars. And so when we look at last year's uh, performances, if I can remember correctly where these guys were in, we got Brennan Poole. We got, uh, let me actually go ahead and look at this really fast. Hold on. Give me a moment. I had to go back. I know you had Poole. You had Parsons in some of these um, other races as well in the short tracks. And so, like, that's where the JD Motorsports cars are going to fall in line. Also, like, I have found some, ironically, how I just suck at the Cup Series. Phoenix and Richmond have probably been the best short tracks I can be at for um, Xfinity. And it is very much practice speed, practice ranking, play or uh, qualifying position. Where is that projected finishing position in comparison to the uh, starting position? That's literally all I've done at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the uh, totem pole here uh, for short tracks and stuff. Especially once you get the guys up top, you're just literally chasing the guys that are trying to fill out your lineups. When we're looking at like the salaries and stuff in that range for this weekend, you end up having, um, I, I want to look specifically at the people at the bottom of the totem pole. So like, I here, let me just pull the fucking CSV, hold on. So we can see, let's just, uh, let's just get this thing in here. Let's import, let's go, let's see. All right. So let's just actually do this. I just, I just don't, I don't like the idea of like, uh, like basing everything off of salary and stuff. I just like seeing where people fall in line and everything. So let's go to put that there. All right. So when we're looking at the bottom of the totem pole, we got Dawson Cram in the JD's Motorsports. We got BJ McLeod in his own thing, which this is interesting. Him at 46 like there's a real chance that if i'm paying up for the for like these goombas and stuff like that is an average uh 10 9 where i'm i i will probably be punting at the bottom of the salary this weekend there is a uh i find it very unlikely that i am not punting uh in this range at some point like cram at 45 i'm interested in uh <laughs> In fact, he's in the four car. BJ in his own stuff, 46, I'm interested in. CJ is terrible, but it's a short track, doesn't matter. Perkins is, has been all right at finishing stuff. Leland in the uh, Iron Motorsports car, most likely uh, mispriced here. Probably not going to go to Patrick, probably not going to go to Frankie. Garrett Smithley, Ryan Ellis, Nick Lights. And so, like, these guys between 55 and 45, this is, this is going to be the sweet spot. We're going to win GPPs off of whoever... Uh, or whoever wins GPP is probably going to win it off of whoever um, lands on this correctly. Unless we lose a lot of 10K guys due to wrecks or failures or whatever, and it causes you to be able to pay up for more um, balance and builds and stuff. But this is the range that I specifically want to focus on. And so when we're looking at, like, Dawson Cram, the four car, you know, I showed you that we were looking at Parsons and uh, Brennan Poole for overall speed. And this race has a really good chance of going green. Uh, and so we're probably, we're gonna have a lot of these guys a lap down, a lot of these guys two laps down. I'm not, I don't really, I'm not crazy about, uh, CJ here. Like this is, this is concerning in the RSS card. When we look at Perkins, who is currently in the, if I can find him, he's in the RSS card. So like, that's not a drastic change from what this has the true potential of being, uh, the Iron Motorsports gang. Or not our motorsports, the young motorsports gang. We understand that he's probably gonna be faster than uh, 49th. We're just gonna have to see where he starts. Like I said, we're not playing Patrick because I don't really want to play Gase. And I mean, Patrick is in the 08 car. So when we're looking specifically at, or he's in the 07 car. And when we look at that car and how they ran last year, like we did have, you know, Yaley 
run in that car at times. This race specifically, he ran into uh, issues. I don't remember exactly what happened. Um, I'm pretty sure he crashed out early. But when we look at the other drivers in, in similar equipment last year, you ended up having, let's find it. It was primarily going downhill. I mean, you had like real, like at the start of the year, you had Greg Alden. I doubt. Yeah, Greg Alden in the 08 earlier, early in the season. And then you end up having people like, um, Skip Yaley, Chad, I'm looking at the short tracks here. They didn't even bother running New Hampshire in this car, or in the 08 car. But like Chad, like Chad was also just slow. You know, that was in the, uh, in this race here. No, he didn't run New Hampshire. No, Chad did not the 07. Whatever, like we, we understand where the SS Greenlight cars are going to fall in line. What I want to look specifically at is the Alpha Beta Prime cars. You know, and so when we're looking at um, Ellis last year, like there's such a, it, I, it, and I guess I've, I've done not even like a, a bad job at this because I've always indicated like, you know, Michigan are like true, you know, green races to indicate where you are in terms of speed. Short tracks too, but like, I think it's just a general, I, I don't think there's like one that's showing the huge discrepancy in terms of speed between the field. I think it's just like, some of these guys are just slow. Some of these aren't. Alpha Beta Prime cars are going to fit in line right between 21st and like 29th all day. Literally just depends on where this guy uh, ends up starting and what he can do. <laughs> like in this, when we look at uh, where are we at, where are we at with, where are we at? I'm looking for Nick here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm looking at an old entry list. So uh, Nick is in the uh, the uh, the 92. The entry list that I pulled earlier in the week did not have him there. So when we look at the 92, we're looking at where uh, Williams was at last year, which I would much rather play the DGM cars at um, short tracks and stuff. Like, that's a much better indicator. Like, the, this for me with Nick, like, Nick should fall right in line with here. Vargas is in the... Uh, Jordan Anderson car, so we're not playing him. We're looking at Yaley, who is an interesting, like th this Yaley, and this, you know, this 14 team, the other SS Greenlight racing car, yet again, like, Yaley ran into issues last year, but when we look at what Yaley has been able to do in cars that don't actually fall apart with him, I would I would imagine we see Yaley qualify probably between 19th and 26th, finish between 23rd and 28th. Um, and so for 58, we got to start seeing a lot more than that. Pool, yada, yada, yada. Kyle Sieg. This is Kyle Sieg all over the place. You know, all over the place in the back of the field. Like, we need him to physically start last here. I want to play Haley Deegan um, unless she qualifies in the top 14 or something. I'm perfectly fine with her. Uh, we already know where Weatherman is. Um, finally being full-time in a car that, like, isn't going to fall apart. Even in his, like, bad equipment and stuff he's been able to get top 20s and stuff so like that's fine once we start going through the rest of the field like clements we know where clements is we know where ryan Sieg is um it's really you know unlike the cup series because it's two drastically different approaches for me for xfinity i really do literally just live off of like practice data for xfinity um versus starting position for these guys and so like, you got Alfredo, who's just like a fucking joke. This guy is trash. But I don't even know why our motorsports even keeps this guy. I think his his finishes last year are very – his speed last year is going to be very similar uh, to this here. When we look at Jeb Burton, that's what he did last year. And this year with Jordan Anderson car, like, priced accordingly, that's fine. Williams in the Cully car. So when we look at what Smith was able to do last year, uh, Chandler, actually. Like – Colleague equipment. When we look at uh, who the hell was in the old colleague cars, uh, it was Chandler Smith. Who was the other fella? Hemrick. 
of course, of course. I just forget this man even exists. When we look at, I spelled that wrong. When we look at where Himrick was, like, and then compare that with what. With what uh with what Williams has at seven thousand dollars, he should have a car or he does have a car that's a top ten car. That's literally all it is. Okay. Yet again, compared to last week, like it was just absolute fucking horse shit in practice. Literally didn't understand how to drive the car. Race perfectly fine in race pace. I'm gonna guess that we have a chance that Williams qualifies poorly again, overdoes it in qualifying or whatever, and starts in the back. Him at $7,000, only needs 35 points to pay it off. Hell, even around like 32 points, I don't think that's a drastically horrific uh, scoring day. You know, like a 4.8, 4.7, whatever. Um, Williams seems like a fantastic play. When we look at Parker, Retzloff, same thing. Like Parker, Retzloff, and, and Williams. And why this is important is if you're looking at the – Top of the salary, and if we're paying up for, like, say, I'm just going to use Nemechek and uh, Chandler Smith as an example. That leaves you $7,000 on average, okay? All right, all right. I would assume that my projections, unless we get drastically wild starting positions from these two guys, it's either going to want to play both Parker Retzloff and Williams and stay in the middle and then go in the 6K range, or we're just pointing, pointing, we're just punting down to, you know, somebody like Cram Perkins Honeyman at 49000 and just getting one of these 7K guys and landing up in a lot of the, uh, the 9AK guys and stuff and really avoiding this range entirely, okay? That's kind of where I'm going to assume that I'm going to end up going. Um, and so, like, Retzloff and Williams being potentially really good plays makes a lot of sense there. Corey Heim <clears throat> in the Sam Hunt car, yet again, 74. I'm fine with that. It's a shame. I'm going to want to see practice here. When we look at Kligerman, like was pretty, they were pretty bad last year at the short track compared to their intermediate package. Um, like probably going to have very little interest in Clickerman unless he's showing a ton of place differential. Like when, when I'm looking at this stuff, when I say, Oh, I have very little interest here. You like, unless like they qualify poorly, but based on where they should be in terms of speed when, and I'm not looking specifically at their salary. I'm looking at where they kind of fall in line in terms of finishing positions and stuff. And then in my head, look at, Oh, well, where he's at in salary probably going to struggle to you know hit value or whatever so when, like when i look at Parker clearman who's going to be somebody who is between you know 11th to 14th you know then combine that with his price combine that w with where he'll most likely start like that's a tough play you know brandon jones that's a tough play jesse love as i said you know i don't envision jesse love you know qualifying poorly but when we look at where creed was last year you know and then where hill was last year and Jesse Love is probably going to start 10th. It leaves you very little upside to lean on, very little upside to chase. Mayer's been very quiet since uh, he went, in his, went on his run. And then, you know, just middle of the pack, like, uh, middle of the pack, like, you know, from a 7th to a 10th place car. $8,500, we need more from him than that. You know, when we look at A.J. Allmendinger hopping into the uh, the Collie cars again, you know, this is what Chandler Smith was able to do. You know, this is what uh, Hemrick was able to do. Probably see AJ run like seventh, finish seventh all day, and by that point we're you know we're back at the top of the guys that we kind of opened with uh, talking with and stuff like that. So I don't know for for me like when I'm viewing this race, as I said, I think I'm gonna probably be paying most likely anticipating to be playing two. If not potentially, if like if there's a place differential guy, probably two guys above nine k range, and that can be even three ten k guys. Playing somebody, probably in probably from Smithley, from fifty three to forty five, and then landing either in the seven k range or finishing off with a uh, an eight k guy. If I'm not using three ten k guys and stuff, so I think this range here is going to be very lower owned at least at the moment, and I don't believe I'm going to have much exposure to like the seven to like fifty seven hundred dollar. Uh, probably not seven with Williams. Probably the 6k range to the mid 5k range i think that's probably going to be the dead zone uh for me when i when i look at this race and and when i just focus on chasing the guys who are going to be getting the fast laps and stuff like that and so past that i will see you guys on the live shows saturday and sunday this week 
I might do an F1 video. I'm not entirely sure. Like, it's going to be the same crap, you know, the same stuff, different day um, for F1. So I'm probably going to pass on that. But we can certainly talk about it on the Discord if you guys want to support me and support the work we, we do here at True DFS. You can join any of the packages we have, whether it be the Safety Sim package, whether it be the NASCAR only package, whatever the case may be. Um, she's just been killing it, man. This guy is wicked wild. This is, I mean, I understand that he's not as loud as some other guys, but I personally have never seen somebody win as much money and be as successful in everything Sheets does. Uh, or I've never seen anybody be as successful in everything as much as Sheets has been um, in the time I've been watching this man just absolutely kill the field. And so uh, I use his projections. I think his ownership, specifically for NASCAR, I guess I should have done this. I guess I'll talk about it in live shows more. But in terms of ownerships and NASCAR, we understand that a lot of sites, and this is, I, I don't want to like trash on other sites and stuff here, and this isn't necessarily that, but in terms of most accurate ownership projections that I have seen consistently, it has been Sheets. Um, if you guys are, I think his ownership is worth the NASCAR subscription alone. I know that sounds crazy, but his ownership is directly what I use in combination with my own projections. Those are the two um, things that I use, and I think that is that is absolutely huge. I need to probably say that <laughs> to start in more videos and stuff. But anyway, I'll see you guys this weekend for live shows. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye.